So we're very excited that you've had these quality, quality uh, companies showing up for this event. You know, everybody has these fantastic GitOps solutions all using Flux. And so we're really excited to um, have our final vendor, who's Andrew Block uh, from uh, Red Hat, who's joined in and uh, really shown some interesting stuff. I wanna make sure I get your uh, title correctly, that you are the distinguished architect at Red Hat. And so it's been really great to meet you in person at KubeCon and I'm really looking forward to this. So. Andrew, take it away. Thanks a lot. Let me go ahead and share my screen. So once again, thanks to everyone from the WeWorks team for inviting you know, Red Hat, myself, to be able to showcase how we can leverage Flux on OpenShift. So let me just go full screen really fast. So. My name is Andrew Block. I'm a distinguished architect from Red Hat. Uh, I've been working in the Kubernetes and container um, realm for quite some time, probably since the early Docker days, definitely pre-Kubernetes. Uh, I do focus on security and automation. GitOps is certainly one area in particular that I uh, know well too well. I work with customers. I'm customer facing, so I work in the trenches, hearing how organizations, large and small, work and some of their pain points. And then I try to bring them back to the open source community because one of the key areas that I see is that the open source community tries to think big, which is great. Many organizations aren't quite there yet. So we try to meet in the middle and see how we can take the best of both worlds from what the, what the upstream community is trying to do to how we can employ that within traditional enterprises. Uh, I am a contributor to many uh, open source projects in particular recently the home project as well as project sync store you now our you know, our folks from the vmware tanzu team just talked about the secure supply chain uh, that's one of the key areas that sync store is uh, looking to address i've also written a number of books out there uh, learn helm so if you want to learn more about the helm ecosystem uh, you can go ahead and read that as well as uh, securing kubernetes secrets it's currently uh, getting it's currently being published um so there's if you're familiar with manning publishing it's in meep status so you can at least start taking a look at some of the work as it's coming along and uh you know we just mentioned i was at kubecon last week uh did speak last week at GitOps con and kubecon both great events so especially as those continue to rotate across the world if you're around go ahead and uh, try to attend if you can at least virtually or in person so first of all Big idea is to drive innovation. Every organization is trying to unveil new opportunities. And one of the ways that I see that is by first innovating, looking for new ideas, but they also want to be able to do so in a consistent fashion so that regardless of where they're going to be deploying, they want to make sure it's standardized across all environments, but they also want to have the automation to reduce the manual actions. How can you scale effectively if you're trying to achieve all these different goals? And that's really where a couple key themes have emerged over the past several years and then we're not going to be talking about anything groundbreaking especially since you know we're here at GitOps days it's really looking at two areas two ingredients for success first is going to be containers container orchestration so really that atomic packaging model for delivery so that you can ensure repeatability so that you don't have servers that potentially are bespoke configured one way in one or one environment and another way in another environment it's how you how you scale effectively and be able to manage the scaling. So containers are great when they were first created. They still are great today, but that's really where Kubernetes and these container orchestrators really started to take hold because it became a management problem. You have all these wonderful containers, but if you can't get a grasp on them, it's really difficult to be able to scale it to wherever you happen to be hosting your infrastructure, whether it be in the traditional data center or all the way out at the far edge. And then this concept of GitOps really emerged itself as a way to achieve great success using containers, having that centralized source of truth, declarative configuration, as well as a tool that can help manage your GitOps processes. Because you can always store your source code in Git, but how you apply it to your destination is really the secret sauce. And it's the tooling that is uh, really essential for that. But on top of that, we got two areas that emerged. We have DevOps. DevOps, the ability to use GitOps and a lot of the containerized technologies to be able to increase the speed of software delivery. We're able to bring in two bespoke areas, which is your operations team and your development teams, 
bringing them together to really provide this holistic solution to accelerate application delivery. And it was great. It helped uh, bring down a lot of barriers, helped get software out there faster. But especially recently, this additional trend really started to emerge. And it was this concept of DevSecOps. Because as many of you are aware, security is you know, front and center. A lot of industries are becoming you know, compromised by software and malicious software and risks. This concept of DevSecOps came in to take the benefits of DevOps and introduce security as a way to really provide a way that brings in your entire organization. Because a lot of times I work with customers, they go ahead and they work on the DevOps processes. It works great, but then they're ready to deploy it to production. And then security team knocks on the door and says, hey, so about that deployment, you got to go back and fix some things. That slows things down. It ends up kind of derailing the entire DevOps process. So DevSecOps really emphasizes bringing security at the forefront. So you operate securely, but also design your application securely and operate in a, in a traditional fashion. It's one of the key topics that I talked about at GitOpsCon last week was how do we properly secure our GitOps? And that's, a, that's a, it's another talk I'm happy to give. But aside from that, I at least wanted to say that security is fundamental. So when we're talking about GitOps, we need to make sure that we have proper secure operations. And really, that's where I'm going to introduce uh, the OpenShift container platform from Red Hat. This is open, Red Hat's contain, um, Kubernetes distribution to enable a secure operation, but also it gives you a lot of additional features like self-service capabilities, automation, collaboration between multiple groups, role-based access control, multi-tenancy, as well as, as I mentioned, to go back again, a secure environment that really is embracing a lot of the Red Hat values of being open source so that we have great contributions to the community, but is enterprise grade, certified, validated, and trusted. And one of the benefits of GitOps is when you introduce Flux. Flux is that GitOps engine that enables you to achieve GitOps in a Kubernetes environment. And coming together with OpenShift, you really have this perfect match between the two solutions. So what can, what can you do with Flux on OpenShift? First of all, you can go ahead and have a one-click deployment through Operator Hub for a seamless installation and deployment of Flux itself. You can also then apply many of the primitives that make for a proper and, and standard OpenShift deployment. You can employ appropriate policy management so that you can leverage a lot of the users, groups, and role-based access controls that are part of the OpenShift ecosystem. You can enforce those security controls so you can take advantage of a lot of the robust security controls that OpenShift provides for both platform administrators and consumers. And then finally, GitOps for all. Not only can your application teams use it, but your developers can use it. So everyone from platform to application teams, they can all use Flux on however they need to do to serve their business purpose. So I wanna take a step back and really talk about the deployment because some of the times getting things deployed properly, it's a challenge. And what Flux and OpenShift allows you to do is to have a seamless deployment through this solution called Operator Hub. And for those of you who are unaware what an operator is, think of an operator as a method for packaging deploying and managing Kubernetes applications at scale in an automated way. And not only is Flux deployed as an operator and available through Operator Hub, the entire OpenShift platform is all managed via operator. So it's all intelligent, all automated and robust. And that's really what you get. And uh, deployment through uh, Operator Hub is facilitated through the Operator Lifecycle Manager in OpenShift, which allows you to take, I wanna deploy Flux. It says, hey, okay, I know, how, I know where Flux comes from. Let's go ahead and then shoot out all of the different components that are part of a Flux deployment, everything from a deployment, all your role-based access controls, service accounts, and everything that you need to do to have Flux running appropriately. So I talked enough. Let's go ahead and talk about how we can actually demonstrate Flux on OpenShift and kind of get into the weeds here. So first, here are some of the key themes that we want to focus on as part of this demo today. First of all, we want to talk about just the Flux deployment, getting it quickly installed, with a one-click deployment to OpenShift. We then wanna go ahead and perform some management and platform management through GitOps to be able to deploy some operators to help manage the platform, as well as employ some configuration and policy enforcement. Another key benefit of OpenShift and Kubernetes is the ability to 
perform multi-tenant enforcement. We can have we can basically isolate individual teams from one another, so they're not aware of anyone else running on the platform. They just think of it as their own platform. And then finally, most importantly, if you have application teams on the platform, how do we go ahead and enable them to be able to be successful by having their applications be deployed? One thing I will take a take a side on is policy enforcement. If you are familiar with Gatekeeper, Gatekeeper is an is a CNCF graduated project under the Open Policy Agent umbrella, which allows you to enforce additional policy mechanisms within OpenShift. What we're going to do here is we're going to deploy it as a cluster operator as part of our Flux configuration and GitOps. And the one policy we're going to go ahead and implement is we're going to forbid the escalation of Flux resources by end users. So we want to so we'll kind of walk through how we can employ additional policies to in to as we really emphasize this whole Git uh, DevSecOps me uh, methodology, we want to make sure that some of the policies that our security team want to employ on the platform are also granted. And we're going to introduce three common personas. We're going to introduce our platform manager, Alice, a developer who wants to be able to develop on the platform, John, and an SRE, Frank. And each one has role-based asset control and user accounts in the OpenShift platform that allows them to have their own scope of the world. So enough of that, let's go ahead and let's get, get running in OpenShift. So I'm gonna first go ahead and log in as my platform SRE. So I'll log in as uh, Alice, get them logged in. Oop, my apologies. I'll go ahead and get logged into the OpenShift environment. And this is our overview page, which provides a quick overview and dashboard of OpenShift. We go over here to the left side and we want to first install Flux. We go over to Operator Hub, which shows us all the available operators that are available in our catalog. Now I'm going to go search for Flux, see it's out there, and go ahead and click on Install. It says that we want to create the Flux operator or the Flux deployment inside this new namespace called Flux System. We can go ahead and click on Install. And just like that, with a one touch deployment, we can quickly install Flux to our OpenShift project. OpenShift environment. And it's going to take a, a, few, a little bit of time for it to pull down the images and start the containers. While it's doing that, uh, let me go ahead and pull up my uh, source code for our deployment. We first want to run a few, a, a few steps. The first step we want to do is once that comes up, we want to set up some of the configuration. The first step we want to do is we want to set up a brand new Git repository that has all of our source code. And then from that, we're going to then deploy our, our infrastructure components. This is going to contain all the policies that are going to be part of our environments. This is going to be everything from deploying Gatekeeper so that we can employ appropriate policies within our environments. Let's just go back over here. And just like that, Flux is currently now running inside our environment. If we go over and look at all the pods that are in our, in our Flux system namespace, Flux is already installed, running no command line, no nothing, one-click deployment all from the browser. Let's go ahead and then move on to deploying our policies. We want to enforce good policy management across our environment. And our security team wants us to go in and deploy the Gatekeeper operator. Gatekeeper is itself, as I mentioned, was that project that is under the open policy agent environment that allows us to enforce proper policies within the, the cluster. So. I can go over here and just copy this. I could use the, the kubectl command line, but I'm going to use the, the web browser here. And inside here, oh, I can go ahead and click on this big plus sign. And then from that, it will allow me to import YAML into OpenShift. As I mentioned, going to add a new Git repository, as well as use customize as a way to render resources as part of GitOps. Go ahead and click on create. And the following resources, as I mentioned, were created basically says we have our Git repository and our customization. Now I have the Flux CLI currently installed on my system. We, can, we, we don't necessarily need to use it, but I kind of wanted to just show it, just to show, a uh, use it, pardon me, to show what we have in our environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and do Flux get all, and then specify the namespace Flux system. And you'll see it's gonna pull in saying, hey, I pulled in a Git repository, and I have a number of customizations that are going to be waiting to be deployed. Customization 
is leveraging a customized templating engine. If you're not familiar with that, it's a way to manage configurations so you don't have to go ahead and run kubectl, apply, or create on all these different resources. You can point it at a set of directories, and it will not only process those directories, but also perform some templating. So this takes about two or three minutes for it to pull down all the resources. So we'll give it a moment for it to do that. While it's doing that, we can see and watch some of the configurations as we go along. Uh, OpenShift also provides an API Explorer, which allows you to look at all of the custom resources, all the resources that are available on the platform. So I can search for customization, and I can see all the different customizations that are currently available inside this Flux namespace, every single one of these. So if I click on one of these, multi-tenant infrastructure, you can basically provide a quick little overview of uh, the current state of this, of this policy. It says it was successfully applied. If there were any errors, it would then show it here inside the UI. Um, just going back here, checking the current state of our infrastructure components. Let's see if it gets for, as you see, we're starting to get some trues. This means that it's slowly reconciling. One of the benefits of GitOps is it's going to perform this constant reconciliation loop, ensure that all the resources as we declare them are set up appropriately. Um, let's give them another, another few moments while it's doing that. OpenShift does have a two perspectives, one that is an administrative perspective and one that is more developer focused, which allows you to showcase and make use of developer features so I can quickly deploy applications and other features within OpenShift. So this allows you to as I go through my development process, I sometimes want to test some configurations and then will then ver verify them, all the manifests that I can then put into my GitOps system. So I kind of go in, get my Kubernetes configurations set up properly, and then pivot back to rendering them and versioning them as well. Being an architect, um, I typically am the one that works with my teams to be able to um, get the configurations just right and then templatize them in a way that they can make reusable for to make them very successful. Uh, we'll then double check back, see what the current state is of our side of things. And we are all true here. It's a little hard to see, but if we kind of, we'll just make it a little smaller. It's just a, it's a rendering of the tables. You'll see that every single one of these is now true, ready to go. If we go look at our, uh, gate, our uh, project list of projects, you should see one out there for uh, Gatekeeper, I believe. Actually, I believe it, it deployed to the Flux system. If we go over to Operator Hub, pardon me, we can go ahead and see that the Gatekeeper operator was successfully installed. So that means we are appropriately employing our, our policies on the platform. So we guarantee that any policies that we want to employ or restrict are ready to go before we bring on any applications themselves. All right, now we wanna talk about application teams. We talked about platform teams, they were successful. Alice being our platform owner, she was the one that got op the OpenShift configuration going. We wanna then make applications available to these two teams. So we go back to our personas. We have, once again, John, our developer and Frank, our SRE. We wanna go ahead and deploy a new namespace for John as a developer and deploy an application for him. If we go back over here to our set of YAML, we're gonna go ahead and create our staging environment, which allows us to take these configurations and it's gonna stamp out a brand new namespace called apps and deploy an application and provide access for John. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at it. Let's go back to OpenShift, go back here. We wanna quickly add some YAML. We'll paste in the YAML saying that we want to reference, you know, the staging configuration and we'll click on create. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of log back out and log in as John. We should have a namespace ready for him. So John. And you'll see we have this brand new namespace called apps. Going into here, click on the project list. Well, this, all, this topology view provides a quick overview of all the applications that are currently in the environment. It's taking a few moments. The bandwidth obviously is a little slow on the Wi-Fi. You know how it is. And you see we have this new this wonderful pod info application where we can see all the different features of the deployment. In this case, we have the deployment, a set of pods, multiple 
pods are running, horizontal pod auto scaler, so that we can, you know, if we get additional traffic to this application, we can easily scale up, as well as a route. A route is a OpenShift um, way to expose the application outside the cluster. So I can go, we can go ahead and click on it, and you'll see we have our application. Just like that, quick configuration, Flux made it really easy for us to push that changes out in an automated fashion, which is great. Our staging environment is working perfectly. We, we get it as we expect we do. Now, we, want, we have our last persona. We are in our staging environment. We now want to swap back over to our production environment. We want to then use Flux to be able to deploy our production environment as well as make use of our SRE team to make sure that our application is running successfully. So that's where Frank will come in and be our persona in the production environment. So Alice being the platform manager is the one who's gonna help with that. So we'll log back out and log back in as Alice and then have which who has the right to perform that, that action. So we'll go back and do Alice and we'll go ahead and log, log back in. And then from that, we can have our next set of manifests. You notice this was for the staging environment. We have this on our production environment. Only difference really here is just we're pointing to a different customization path in that customize will go ahead and stamp out for us. We'll once again, go click on the plus icon, which will then allow us to add resources to our open trip environment. And then by creating the customization, Flux is gonna go ahead and create a new project namespace in OpenShift and deploy the resources. And then from that, I'm gonna swap back over to my, since we wanna emulate what Frank will see in his workspace, I will go ahead and log back out and log back in as Frank to then see what he has. So we go ahead and log out, we'll log back in as Frank, and we will be able to see a few key things here. One, notice he only sees apps prod. He doesn't see apps, he doesn't see our regular apps, which John has access to. This really emphasizes how Flux is able to help us out employing multi-tenant environments. Now this could be all within one cluster like I'm showcasing here, or it can be in multiple dispersed clusters. It was just easy for demonstration purposes to just focus on one cluster. So I can go in here, once again, go to the topology view, and then see that my application is currently running successfully. I can then click on the route that's created and ensure that, yep, as the SRT, SRE team, you can ensure that it's running without any issues. Great, awesome, perfect. The last thing I'm gonna do is we've now verified that John has access to um, the development environment. We have Frank running successfully in our, as our SRE, making sure the application's running in production. As you see here, we're getting the nice, thunk, nice, you know, he's happy, our little icon here is very happy. Uh, so our application looks good. Perfect. Let's go back, log back in as our, um, as Alice, as our plus platform SRE. We wanna do one more thing and we wanna really showcase how DevSecOps at Art is allowing us through a deployment, through our Flux-based deployment of Gatekeeper, able to help protect our environment. So we'll go ahead and we'll log in as Alice. We'll let, we're now log back in as Alice. And what we're gonna do here is showcase one of the policies that that Gatekeeper set up for us. Now, for those of you that are familiar, unfamiliar with Gatekeeper, Gatekeeper allows us to use the open policy agent to employ certain policies. And you do so by creating what they call constraint templates. So I go over here, here, and go to constraint templates. I have one called Flux Multi-Tenancy. And from that, we have a set of Rego. If you're familiar with Rego, Rego is the is the templating language or the uh, language, the rules of policy language of open policy agent. And what this is basically allowing us to do is to, this is really where the, um, the crux of things are, I'll make it a little bigger for us to see it here, ensuring that for our customization resource, we wanna enforce that the namespace of our resource always matches the target namespace. So we wanna use admission control in Kubernetes to enforce that this, that these resources are set up appropriately. So when we try to create a resource where this is violated, we want that to be rejected. And that's what we're gonna showcase here is we're gonna have a, we're gonna go ahead and try to create a resource in our apps project, but we're then gonna try targeting it to a separate project. And that we want to deny via open policy agent. So we'll go here, 
I have a sample policy here. And we'll kind of walk through this policy really fast. So we'll go and try to, uh, try to attach it. Notice how we want to add this policy to the apps prod project, but we want to target a different project, apps my namespace. This is one that we have a policy in place that should forbid that open policy agent should get a webhook call from the Kubernetes API to showcase how or to basically validate that that rule is being enforced or not. If we try to create that resource, notice we get an error. It basically says admission webhook. We denied the request. Customization namespace and target namespace must be the same. Since it is not the same, it fails, which is basically what our what our security team wanted to employ using get using DevSecOps principles employed by uh, by Flux through our GitOps processes as a way that we can provide for a secure environment. So thus far, we've now showcased how easy it was for us to be able to use OpenShift to deploy Flux, Flux be able to really be the powerhouse behind GitOps to enforce not only what our, what our security team needs, but also what our development team needs, our platform team and our SRD team all can do all successfully within the OpenShift environment. So I'm going to close you with a couple couple final points. Uh, first of all, if you want to learn more about the demo, we have some we have the the resource that you can go ahead and play around the demo yourself. Bitly.com/slash/getopsdays. That's Red Hat. If you want to learn more about Flux, I'm sure you already have plenty of resources out there that the, that the we've worked team has passed along as part of GitOps. And also, if you want to learn more about OpenShift, there's also try to openshift.com to learn more about OpenShift. Um, since we have a few minutes, uh, I do have some time for some questions. So happy to take any questions if there are any. Oh, sorry, my camera. Um, yeah, we do have a question in um, the channel. The question was, um, have you tried Flux, Red Hat, ACM, and Kyverno? I have. Okay. Uh, Kyverno, for those of you who don't know, is another policy framework similar to Open Policy, similar to Gatekeeper. Uh, it just has, once again, uh, and uh, another a templating engine, another enforcement engine. It doesn't use uh, open policy agent in Rego. It uses its own uh, syntax that is uh, a little more Kubernetes friendly. So if you don't want to learn the intricacies of Rego, you can certainly look in, in, into Kyverno as another one. One of the benefits of Flux is really the ability to, you know, be, be that GitOps engine that allows you to, it doesn't really matter what you deploy. It can be open policy agent and gatekeeper could be Triverno and Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management is a way that you can run multiple deployments of OpenShift and Kubernetes and manage them from a centralized source. 